Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for what we are calling the November 2019 World Docs Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems, where today we are talking about getting things into a folder type of structure. And so we're going to talk about categories and projects. Mary Jo will talk about categories, which is something that you can put into a, a kind of a, a, a folder structure. What can you look at as kind of a folder structure? And I'm going to talk about projects, the same sort of thing. When you put things in a project or when you assign them to categories, it's like putting them in a folder that's called whatever you call that category or whatever you call that project. And so there you have it. Let's talk about categories and projects. Mary Jo, you start with categories and I'll come in behind you and talk about projects. Okay, can you push all your magic buttons that you have, Paul, and get Roblox up here for me? Not just all one, of them. but all, all of those, them. Okay. All those magic buttons. There we go. Well, there we go. So categories, like Paul said, is like a way to subcategorize your document. So we have doc type, so that's fine. We might have correspondence or letter or uh, pleading or different court, you know, doc types that you're saving your documents in. But maybe you want to further classify those documents, just like you would in a file structure. Maybe you want to have the doc type be pleading, but you want to have categories for what type of a pleading it is, dismissals or complaints or whatever that might be. And for any of your doc types or any of your documents, I should say, you can have these categories that you can put those documents into. So to add them to a category, we're going to get into, are we in our city of Mesa? We are. So I'm going to add the category column up here. Um, whoops, it's not letting me click, Paul. I thought I asked for control, but I'm going to ask well, for Well, I'll add the category column while you yep, ask control. That sounds good. So as he um, adds this, you're going to want to have this categories column on your, um, your view here. So you can add it and then you can customize your view here by clicking on the little gear and then make that your favorite view so it sticks. So you're, you're going to want that category um, column here to be able to add those. So let me get off of that. Um, so then what we're going to do is just go to one of our documents and I'm going to take this municipality memo over here document, this one here. And if I right click on that, uh, I can add a category. So right here, there's add category, or I can even create and edit the categories from this list. So I'm going to add a category, and I have public and folder categories. So the difference in these are public categories are available for all users on all matters. Uh, so it, they're global for all matters. They're things that would apply to any of them uh, out there, and they could be used for any document. Folder categories, on the other hand, are going to be specific to the, certain, the current matter that you are on um, and will only be available for that matter. And you can create different folder categories for other matters if you want to. So you can see here on my public categories, I'm just going to hover over there, I have two that are created. I have facilities and I have housing. This is the city of Mesa, Mesa so they have facilities that we want to classify documents into that or we want to classify documents into a housing category. Now we could expand this list to have several um, and same thing with the folder. Um, and I said the city of Mesa, those actually public would be available for all, all of them. And we're, we're in test data, so I don't know if this really even makes any sense at all for what this has been created for or how, but the idea is public categories are available globally for all matters uh, folder would be specific to this matter. So let's say I wanted this one to be, um, this municipality memo has to do with the 2018 tax document. So I want to just assign that to it. So this would be specific and it's going to put that on there. Now maybe this is also part of the facilities. The nice thing about categories is you can apply multiple categories to a document. It doesn't have to be just one. So I can come in here, go to my public, and I can also say that it's facilities. So now it belongs to two category groups. If I do, I'm going to do another document here, and I'm just going to highlight this one and right click it. I'm going to put this one to 2019. Well, first I'll put it to housing, and we'll go to housing. And then I'm also going to put it into 2019 documents. So we're going to add a category there, folder. We'll put it into 2019. 
So now I've classified these two documents into two different groups. And the nice thing is that with these documents, when you have them categorized up here, you are able to sort your list by category. Uh, but when you have multiples, that makes it a little harder to find them. So what you can do is go over here to Filters, and categories actually show up on your filters. So we can see on all of the documents that we have on the screen up above, we have four categories that have been assigned to various documents. Now it could be these ones. I could actually assign this one up here uh, to just facilities. Maybe I'll do that and I'll get, you know, it's not going to add any other um, categories on my list down below, but it is going to give me more options. Oops, did I click it? I think I lost it there. Let's try that again. Get back up here and right click, add it, and we are going to go over here to public and we're going to add facilities to that one. Um, so now we've got that. So if I were to click on facilities, now I've got two documents that fit that criteria. So if I um, just go over to my category and I select facilities here, just check I want to see just the documents that belong to the facilities category, there's my two documents that I have. And apparently we had another one. Maybe I had three that are out there. So we have three documents that um, fit that criteria for those categories. Uh, I can see uh, if I wanted housing, I can do that one, and I can uncheck facilities. Now I'm going to get the housing documents, any of those. So it's one extra level there, or several. I mean, you can do, again, multiple categories, levels that you can break out your documents even further and categorize them that way. You can also search categories. So when you're doing a search, you can search by category to find um, documents that way. So if they, you know, global, um, you know, those uh, public categories, if you wanted to, you know, go out and search all documents out there that had that particular category, you could do that. Uh, so lots and lots of functionality for you to really hone in and, and get those documents to the place that you want them to be. Um, so, and if you use the tile view, if you are actually sorting on the categories, and you use your tile view, you can, you can actually sort them into groups on a tile view as well, which is sometimes helpful too. So in this list, I'm actually seeing all of the tax documents, all of the facilities, and all the housing. So that kind of is a, another option for you. Uh, Paul? One thing I'll add is that they work together. So we're currently looking at housing. Mm -hmm. um, but if we also click facilities, now we're looking at, uh, oh, we're sorted by category. That makes it a little weird. Yeah. Hold on, let me, yeah. sort, let me yeah. sort by modifier. Sort. Mm -hmm. So if we sort, if we click on facilities and housing, now we're seeing documents that have uh, either of those things, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of mix and match and, and, and play with it to your heart's content. And the the you beauty can of this is- You categories. Mm -hmm. You can exclude true. them too. You can click over if here. You did the minus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let, let me finish. Let it finish building that list. Now we click here. Yeah. And and that plus became a minus. And now if I say uh, facilities again, oops, I think I clicked it twice. Now it's excluding facilities, so it shows me everything um, except for facilities. So the facilities have been excluded from the list. Of course, we picked a list that takes eight seconds to read. Yeah, off. it's a I long list of doc uh, documents in our test matter of the city of Mesa. <laughs> a lot right. going on there. Right. Yeah. So there the point is you can, you can exclude or you can include and you can mix and match mm -hmm. and you can click multiple things. So now we're looking at um, well, I've gone ahead and unclicked something, but if I were to click facilities again, I would be looking at everything that does not have facilities because I've got this changed mm -hmm. over to my, my red minus sign. Okay, awesome. So the beauty of this, and what I'm going to show you is, unlike if, if you had a regular folder structure in your old-fashioned Windows File Explorer and you wanted to put something into multiple folders, you had to make a copy. You had to copy it into those multiple folders. And then you end up juggling multiple versions, multiple copies, I should say, of the same document just because you wanted to put it into different folders. Here you're applying these categories to the same document. And so you're not really making a copy of the document to make that show up in all those categories. You're just assigning the categories to it. Now the other way to do this, let's go ahead and get, let's clear all filters and get back to 
where we were with a just plain old file, and I'm going to close up this um, this tab here. And so we'll end up with all the documents from the city of Mesa. And now I want to create a couple of projects that contain certain documents. So a project uh, is is like defining a container that you can then put things into, and you're really just putting pointers into that container, that project, if you will. And, and unlike categories, uh, projects can be sent back and forth. So you could send a project to somebody and say, hey, here's all the documents that span these four matters that have to do with this one particular real estate closing. Um, so it's a container. A project is a container that you can dump documents into, and then you store the project, the container, the, 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 the folder, if you will, and you can also you know, send that to somebody else. So if I wanted to put this document and this document and this document all into the same project, I now have three documents selected down below or dropped down below, and I can save that. I am in my project pane. So as soon as I selected my project pane, that empty area opened up for me to be able to drag things into. And I dragged these three documents into the project area and I'm gonna save it now. And when you save it, you're saving it somewhere in World Docs. So I can put this in the city of Mesa, in the gas supply area under the scheduled doc type. And I can call this um, meter in Inspection documents. So that's a, a, a group of documents that I want to all put together and, and put into a container that has this meter inspection documents name. And I am storing the container in the same matter. And so now when I go back up to the top of my list, um, I have a project for VUG and I'm going to resort And one more time to get it back up to the top. I should also, unless I put it in the wrong place, I should also have this uh, project for uh, meter, gas meter, inspe meter inspection documents. So this project, I can go ahead and close the project down here. And if I open this, it's going to open up a separate tab and show me those three documents. I still have the other tab. Here's my project that I created this morning when Mary Jo and I were playing with this. It's going to open up a separate document tab and show me these documents. So I have two projects open. The project for bug that we created this morning and the meter inspection documents that we created uh, just now. And they are both stored in the same matter. They don't have to be stored in the same matter. Uh, they could be stored anywhere. Maybe you're going to store it in your your personal cabinet, your, your, your own folder, your own section of your personal cabinet, or maybe you're going to store it in some administrative cabinet, or maybe you're going to store it in the same cabinet, but in a different matter. Remember I said, a project can have as many documents from as many matters as you need, uh, or as many areas or locations as you need, all put together. And then you can store that container wherever you want it to go. So we created this project. Uh, which we can see its documents here. And we put these three documents into it and we saved it back in the city of Mesa, um, uh, a gas meter project, whatever it was called, uh, 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 a gas meter uh, uh, matter. And so we, we took documents from that matter and we stored it in that matter. But you can store it wherever you want and you can take your documents from wherever you want. If we were to uh, want to edit this project, we just highlight the project, click the edit button, it drags those three documents back down here. We could take things out. We could um, remove a file by, by highlighting it and clicking to remove. We can add a new file here or we can just drag another file down. So if this agenda also had to go in here, all I have to do is that and then save as, give it the same name, replace project in other words, and now I've got a four document project all ready to go. People like to organize things into what we used to call folders. And these projects and categories give us ways to organize things using that same type of um, container 
sort of approach. We're going to create a project and put some things into it. We're going to create some tags and apply them to documents so that later we can filter down based on those tags. It's just another way to organize your documents like you would have in a folder type approach, but without the folders. Next month in December, we're going to talk about uh, a document compare, starting a document compare from within World Docs, how to make that happen, whether it be the Word document compare or if you've got some compatible document software like a, a Compare Docs or something else that's compatible with World Docs, how to actually start that from within World Docs. A lot of people don't know you can do that. We're going to show you how to do that. Mary Jo is going to show you that. And we're going to talk a little bit about the integration that needs to be in place for e signature software to work. We've been getting a lot of questions about e-signature software and, and having it work within World Docs. So we're going to address those integration issues because there's a lot of confusion about that. And so I'll take that topic. Um, our website has all sorts of valuable content. So I'm going to take you there just to show you that. And if you go to Attorney Computer Systems, notice the emphasis on the last S in the word systems because without it, you won't get to the right place. If you'll go there and either hover over or click on the word videos, you will be taken to our, uh, if you click, you'll be taken to a more expanded view. If you hover, you'll get a little menu that pops up. These are the six video titles that we currently have in our library. You'll notice that four of them are live events, and three of those live events are virtual user group meetings. You happen to be in one right now. You're in the World Docs virtual user group meeting in case you forgot where you were. Uh, we also have a virtual user group meeting for tabs and one for Practice Master. And we also have my Coffee Pot webinar series where each month I invite somebody in from a company that has a product or service that adds value to one of our core products, adds value to tabs or Practice Master or World Docs or Net Documents or Cosmolex. And I'll have them come in and uh, explain how their product works, explain how their company was, was formed and talk about pricing and answer questions. A uh, really good way to, to get information on other products that can help you take advantage of, of World Docs, for instance. Uh, these are all live events. And then we have two um, titles, if you will, that are pre recorded. Mary Jo has her eBytes video series. She records three of these each month one on tabs, one on Practice Master, one on World Docs. These are very short. We take something really cool that we think we can explain in two or three minutes, and we do a video on it, and we call it an eBite. Um, for those things that take a little longer, we do have what we call the Paul and Mary Jo Show. That's where I or Mary Jo will take a broader topic or one that requires a little bit more in-depth discussion. And we will spend 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes on it and uh, get, really dig into the weeds and, and figure out what and explain what it is that we need to explain about that particular topic. Um, if I click, for instance, on the World Docs Virtual User Group meetings, you'll find that uh, since it's a live event, there's registration information that you can fill out, first name, last name, uh, email, and firm, and that's all you need. Click the button below, and uh, it will register you for it. Uh, so that's it. That's it for today, and that's it for uh, everybody. Have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the month, and we will see you in December when we talk about Doc Compare starting from World Docs and eSig. Uh, e-signature software uh, integration requirements. Thanks much. Bye-bye, everybody.